We're about two months away from the summer championship series season and it is getting really intense here and we're at the fourth of five stops at the tier pro swim series at the Col Col councilman billingsley aquatic center you see the two guys at this this wonderful facility is named after hobie billingsley the legendary diving coach and then doc councilman the legendary innovator coach just everything what swimming doc councilman did you're here watching deck pass live presented by xfinity i am jeff cummings with Olympian Caitlin Sandino. Oh, Caitlin, it, I'm getting kind of excited. The closer we get to the summer championship season, the more I think the, the athletes are getting excited because they know tapers coming. It definitely, I was going to say, it's an interesting time of the season to put up some fast times because you're swimming very tired, obviously. Mm -hmm. But you know that tapers coming. You can feel it. You can sense it. Then it's going to be lights out this summer. And that means next summer, Olympic trials, Olympics with the Omaha announcement that happened the last uh, two days ago, yeah, I believe. Yeah, I'm just, I'm excited. Yeah, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be here before we know it. I just cannot believe how quickly things progress. Because when you're a swimmer, it kind of, time seems like it moves real slow. But I think when you're off, out of that scene, right. it seems like, oh my gosh, <laughs> Olympic trials is going to be right here. And I think probably the coaches are starting to feel it too. And I think they just have to kind of call on their athletes yeah, down yeah. a little bit. Say, you guys still got another year and two months or so. Definitely. But uh, we just had a great prelim session here at the Co Councilman Billingsley Aquatic Center. And... One of the big highlights that everybody wanted to be here to see this mm -hmm. was Nathan Adrian's yes. return to racing. Yes. Not just his first race since December 1st, but his first race since he was diagnosed with testicular cancer. Right. Underwent surgery and everything mm -hmm. that had to go through that. Mm -hmm. And he was really great to find, kind of track his progress on social media. Definitely. Everybody knew what was going on. Right. And I think that kind of really kind of gave us an awareness of what it's like to be, you know, one of the healthiest people on the planet and what you have to do to, it's not easy to just bounce right back from right. something like that. Right, definitely, I think you just nailed it. I mean, cancer does not care who you are, what you do, how healthy you are, it comes at you. And I think it was really brave how he decided to share his story with us so he can encourage and motivate and support. And that's what I love about the swimming community, seeing everybody rally around him and all the support that he got. Yeah. And then just everybody cheering that he's here this weekend and yeah. sending texts and putting stuff on Twitter and social media, just really, everybody's always rooting for Nathan. Just a guy that is just so likable. So yeah. it's so amazing to see him here and he did a great job in prelims this he morning did pretty good I don't know if maybe he was a little bit nervous about that <laughs> 100 freestyle but you know I was just excited to see him first of all just get up on the blocks and we saw everybody just kind of just really kind of a little little tense to see first of all how he would get off the blocks right but he had mentioned in classic that. Nathan mm -hmm. style he got off well there he's fourth from the top mm -hmm. and I, th I don't know if maybe he was trying to just shake off some cobwebs. Like we said, he hasn't raced this December. Right. But going out, he looked pretty darn good. Right. Like you had mentioned getting off the blocks. I'd read an article where he said he was a little, his vertical leap isn't as high as it used right. to be. So the, he, he had made a comment about what his start would be like. But I thought he looked really strong coming home. Um, it was You saw everybody in the stands filming him, all eyes on him. Yep. And, you know, he just looked really excited to be there. And I think... And he knows what he needs to do in right. this prelim session just to get back for finals, not to expend too much energy. And you know that he's not really expending too much energy because here we are about 10 meters from the wall. He mm -hmm. doesn't go into that straight arm freestyle, which right. means he's not putting 100% effort into it. And he gets third in the heat. Yeah, good finish. Just fine. 49-3, mm -hmm. um, I believe. And, you know. I think that's good. I, I can't <laughs> wait to see what he does when he, you know, everything lets loose tonight. Because it's a great field tonight, including his Olympic mm -hmm. teammate, Blake Peroni, yep. who put up a really solid swim this Speaking morning. Speaking of Blake, we have a ton of fast, incredible Ooh. Indiana athletes here. I'm so excited to watch. Lily King just looked so at home this morning in yeah. her 100 breaststroke. Cody Miller put up a fantastic prelim yeah, split. 59 or 7 in the 100 <laughs> breast. I Cody, believe. just prelims. <laughs> yeah, slow down, Cody. So, you know, this is this is a, a long road for Cody. He was injured yes. last summer. So, I, I'm sure he's glad to be under that one minute. But again, to do it in prelims, I think it just wanted, he wanted to show what everybody could do. But also, in the Tier Pro Swim series, they do give this bonus for people right. who put up the top prelim swim of the meet. Yes. So I think he might have been going for a little, a little bonus extra money. money. Yeah, <laughs> and, you know, like he's local, so that extra money doesn't, you know, it goes right into his pocket. It's not like why well, he has to pay for plane fare or anything like that. So <laughs> we're going to see how that all shakes out as we get through the meet. But it was just so amazing to see 
um, Nathan do that hundred freestyle, and we've got Katie Ledecky who had a great say, four hundred freestyle. Two prelims, four hundred freestyle. Just looking like nothing. <laughs> right. Just everybody else is just swimming so hard behind her, and mm -hmm. she's just like, yeah, this is pretty good. <laughs> so we got a lot of Olympians here to watch. If you're anywhere near the Bloomington area, please come out and watch finals tonight. If you don't get to watch it finals here live, you can see it on the Olympic Channel beginning at six p.m. Eastern. It's going to be electric. Um, and like we said, we have a lot of IU swimmers here. They're, they're all just swimming so well. But you know, the, the, they come to this pool every day and right. they swim back and forth every day. And um, we saw some of the, the photo of Doc Councilman and Hobie and Billy. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of photos around here right. of Olympians, including mm -hmm. Cody and Lily, and Lily and Blake. But just the, the legacy that's in the air here mm -hmm. is huge. Mm -hmm. And we owe a lot of that to Hobie Billingsley and Doc Councilman, right. as we said. A lot of um, history. Now, for those of you who may not know who Hobie Billingsley and Doc Councilman are, you're missing out on a lot of, of history here. Hobie was the diving coach at IU for 30 years, and many of his divers won multiple NCAA titles. He also coached numerous Olympic medalists, including Mark Lindsay, as you see, he's a little bit over there, and Leslie Bush. But the man we're going to talk about today um, on today's show, James Doc Councilman, um, He's, in my mind, he's the father of modern day swimming. Yes. A lot of the things that uh, we take for granted that we do in the water and, and the tools that we use in swimming, that was Doc Councilman. He did a lot of the things. And one of the things I know we were talking about this earlier, uh, that you were surprised that he invented the pace clock. Yeah, I was like, wait, Doc did the pace clock? Yeah, and <laughs> he, he was so advanced for his time. Yeah, <laughs> and he was a swimmer, and he was a very good swimmer at some point, but you see him there uh, coaching a lot of great athletes. Um, and that's, there's so many more things that he's done. The bent elbow arm pull for freestyle. Doc Councilman came up with that. Uh, underwater filming, hypoxic training, and we said pace clocks. I mean, he invented those right here in Bloomington. It's just absolutely amazing. And then he coached some really, really amazing swimmers. I mean, we, some of the legends in swimming, Mark Spitz. Mm. Doc Councilman coached wow. him to those seven gold medals in Munich in 72. <laughs> just a little bit of a big just deal. Just a little bit of a big deal. <laughs> uh, and, he, and Councilman was also um, the head coach of the, the men's team for Team USA in 1976. Mm -hmm. That was where Team USA won 12 of 13 gold medals on the men's wow. side, which was kind of opposite of the women's side where East Germany was winning right. 12 of 13. Um, but uh, all of those medals, I think pretty much all of the gold medals that were won by Team USA in Montreal were won by Doc Councilman Swimmer, so it was absolutely amazing. Uh, so Doc passed away 15 years ago, but his legend, his leg legacy still lives on. And our guest today is one of the people who's carrying on that legacy, Dr. Joel Steger. It's good to see you here. How are you doing? Thanks for the invitation. I'm doing great. <laughs> so you are the, uh, you work here at IU um, with kind of is it really called, it's kind of called the Councilman Center for Swimming, is it right? The Councilman Center for the Science of Swimming. Yes, a little long name, but <laughs> it, it gets actually to the right to what it is, that's about right. the science of swimming. Right. And that's really what Doc Councilman was. He was a scientist who applied a lot of science to the way swimmers swim. And it's been really remarkable how some of the things, as we said, like that bent yeah, elbow I'm pull and freestyle, yeah. I mean, Everybody takes it for granted now, but I mean, that was yeah, that was something that. that was very revolutionary. And he said, you know, what if we did it this way? <laughs> and his swimmers did it and they were just so much faster. And it's just absolutely amazing. So um, you've been, you obviously worked with Doc Councilman. Tell us about the first time that you met him. <laughs> well, I was, I want to say this, I was a typical college senior at the time. <laughs> and I wasn't exactly sure where I was going and what I was gonna do for the rest of my life. Um, I swam down to the University of Miami and we were headed to a training trip in Puerto Rico. And we had to be down there a day early and so we were drifting around and somebody calls me up and says, hey, uh, Indiana University and Doc Councilman are over at the pool uh, mm -hmm. training for Christmas. It's like, how about uh, you want to go see them? So yeah. anyway, we went over there and stood outside the cyclone fence, you know, gazing in and Councilman's oh. Because you know, he's he, he's pretty much bored with everybody going back and forth. <laughs> anyway, so he he eventually gets around to saying, "So what are you going to do next year?" You know, and I said, "Well, I don't know." He goes, "You need to come to Indiana University." And I said, "Well, <laughs> I'm thinking about going to the University of Alaska because I want to study diving mammals." And he goes, mm. "I got 34 diving mammals <laughs> <laughs> right here. Yeah. Yeah. All I got to go to Indiana." So anyway, I did I did go to Indiana and. and the rest is history. I'm still here. <laughs> yeah, obviously. Uh, so when when you got 
here to Bloomington? What was what were the kind of the things that that you, the two of you were working on? Well, I want to say this: his his curiosity was endless, and so at Franny, he didn't make any assumptions about anything. Mm -hmm. All right. So in other words, that was sort of the philosophy: is question everything. Right. So I'd be sitting on the deck with him, and he'd say. Joel, why do we why do we cool down after practice? Do you think we should be cooling down after practice? And of course, I'm just like, well, we've been doing it for the last 50 years. I always ask that question. I'm like, why do I have to go do this? Uh, I'm with you, Doc. Yeah, yeah. So he'd be like, well, maybe we should think about that. Maybe, maybe next year we're not going to do warm up. Ooh, warm up he's my type of guy. But but it, but it was. Uh, I sort of controlled chaos because mm -hmm. uh, you never knew really what was going to happen next and where, sure. what you were going to do next. And it was just it was just terrific fun. What was the goal of the center when it was opened? Well, again, there's some history there too. Mm -hmm. um, back in '99, before your time, mm -hmm. um, the industry introduced the new new technology swimsuits. Okay. Right. Yep. Right. And it was kind of a fiasco mm -hmm. because. They weren't readily available for all the swimmers, and so USA Swimming said, "Okay, here's the deal. We'll, we'll let we'll let you use these, but everybody at the Olympic trials in 2000 right. has to be have access to these." Right, I remember that. And so I started getting calls from coaches and saying, hey, "What do you think about this?" And I was like, "Boy, mm. this is this would make me nervous. Right, never never wear." And remember, mm -hmm. these went down to the end of your arms mm -hmm. and down. Yeah. So it was completely different from what the swimmers are used to. 100%. Anyways, we did some analytics basically on the performances because the rationale was that, well, in 1996, nobody had these suits. Right. In 2000, I think it was 92% of the swimmers in the trials wore the suits. Mm -hmm. right. So if they were functional, if they were really having an effect, we'd be able to see statistically. Mm -hmm. Well, the answer to the story was <laughs> we didn't see any difference. Interesting. So as a result, that got a lot of publicity, huh. and the university kind of said, you know, this is this is really interesting stuff. Would you be interesting in, in starting a center, sort of honoring Don, Doc Councilman's legacies? And so that's literally how we got started. We sort of, I want to say, used the the MythBusters thing. Yeah, I was but thinking that, that. that you guys are so <laughs> swimming MythBusters. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. 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 As I said, sometimes we we don't necessarily make uh, friends doing it, but. Uh, you know, what you realize is, is, and you both realize this, is that the lifespan of anybody's athletic careers is pretty short. Right. Yeah. Right. And right. you know, you're sitting there going, that's it, mm -hmm. I'm done. Mm -hmm. yeah. In a blink. Um, <laughs> yeah, so we, we kind of feel like we're, we're in it for the athletes. You know, we, we don't want people to waste time. And I want to say that's where, you know, Doc, uh, when I did get to Indiana, he says, uh, so what's, what's your main focus here? I said, I said, my career went like this. Mm -hmm. I said, so I, w I would like to understand what what is beneficial and what's just a waste of time. How much time are we wasting right. having our athletes do things that nobody knows why they're doing it? Right, right. right. So That's pretty spectacular. And then leading up to just very recently, one of the things you were talking about, maybe you, know, you got a lot of <laughs> flack for 2015 World Championships where there was a lot of controversy over there was possibly a current going on in that pool in Barcelona, and you guys actually went through scientific equations and plugged in numbers to prove that they're actually that some people had an advantage depending on what lane they were in. Talk yeah. about how you discovered that. Well, again, I want to say one of the idioms, if you will, is the more you look, the more you see. Mm. And so the people that are looking are the coaches. Yeah. And so if, if we are effective communicating with the coaches and the swimmers, they're the ones that come up with most of this stuff. And so I literally got a call from somebody who was on deck during the championships and said, is it possible that there's a current in a competitive pool? And I was like, hmm, I don't know. I said, but get me with the results. I can tell you whether or not it oh, exists. And so we spent a couple of weeks analyzing all the data and it huh. was like, oh yeah, there was a current and it was big. Wow. It was very significant in terms of determining the outcomes of races. And, huh. and, and once again, you're sitting there going, how many years did you train? Exactly. Yeah. And you want that guy over in lane eight to win because he's in a fast lane? Right. Right. So we thought that might be an isolated situation. And then we had to go back and we analyze events 10 years earlier. Oh, wow. And we continued. 
and it turns out it's not isolated. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> Maybe oh, I no. do want lane eight now. I know, I know. Everybody's thinking you don't want lane Outside eight. Outside smoke is a real yeah. thing, people. Yeah, it really <laughs> depends. Yeah, it depends on the pool. Mm -hmm. so, Definitely. So I think that's unfortunate because particularly like in pro series or international competition, your financial, you're going to take a financial yeah. hit. Right, right, definitely. It's a so good point. So we felt that somebody had to be, you know, watching mm -hmm. over things a little bit and, and basically discussing with national organizations and international organizations, there has to be a way of measuring right. sure. pool current. Yeah. Right. You know, we measure the distance of the pool. We measure that. You, you do know, everything right? else. Yeah. So it's like, that's pretty important. No anyway, kidding. That's, that's kind of what we do. We, we try to safeguard if sure. you will to some extent well so speak sorry go ahead no i was gonna say speaking of uh importance chocolate milk talk to me about the chocolate milk mythbusters you know, <laughs> these are you know what these, again these are stories i right. mean this is what happens is i was actually coaching a high school team and you see the kids every day and so sometimes you don't realize you know things are changing but they're subtle yeah so we somehow or another we, we started to take some measurements and we got midway through the season somewhere in the middle of december and we realized the kids had lost a tremendous amount of weight mm. half of them were sick mm -hmm. you know they, they were just training like you know so i, I sat down <laughs> with the kids and i said what what exactly is going on the story is this so and I know this sounds bad, but the girls were basically spending time looking good rather than <laughs> I eating. I mean, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> right? Rather than, so they would skip yeah. breakfast. So oh. we'd have practice at morning, five o'clock. The girls would skip breakfast. The guys were just stupid, right? Because <laughs> they never had any money, so they would, they would miss. So yep, they'd come yep, back. Yep. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so at three o'clock in the afternoon, after practicing, go to school, none of, most of them had anything to eat. Oh, wow. So come on, guys. The next step is I, you know, I had to give him a big lecture. <laughs> about two days later, one of the swimmers walks in with this can of stuff and he says, well, what, what do you think about this, Dr. Steger? And I go, you paid $40? <laughs> you know, how many meals oh, did you get out of that? Right? He goes, well, about five. And I'm like, oh, oh come on. Right. So, mm -hmm. so I said, give me the can. I went over to the grocery store. I went to the library. I spent, I spent a week reading and blah, blah, blah. And I said, you know what? Chocolate milk basically fits the bill wow. in terms of the sports mm -hmm. nutritionist. Right. All right, so this is maybe 2002 or 2003. Right, I started doing it. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I heard from swimmers that they were already doing it. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so so I basically made a, a you know an email to the team and the parents. I I come in in the morning and be like eight gallons of chocolate milk waiting <laughs> oh, for me. Right? Perfect. That's great. But it all worked. Right. Within yeah. three weeks, they were training gait. They were wow. swimming fast. They, they, Easy anyway. So then, of course, you know, well, wait a minute. We could do this over in the lab. So we actually got cyclists and recruited cyclists, did a group of cyclists, got the same results. They, they, they trained and, and, and rode amazingly. Wow. So, but you know, and then we did track and then we, and we finally, it was probably five years ago that we actually did swimmers, which is where we started. <laughs> there you go. But, but it's hard, hard uh, it's hard to do, I want to say research-wide rigorously. Yeah, yeah. Because um, what, what is your measure? Your measure is performance. And you know, you know that, you know, if I hand you chocolate milk, you know you're drinking chocolate milk. Right. So it's hard to be, you know, to know exactly. double blind, yeah. Yeah. blah, 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 right, blah. Right. So anyway, every time we've tested it, it comes out positive. Well, I That's did it. I did at yeah. University of Michigan. Just I a remember doing it. Chocolate milks after yeah. practice. Yeah. You so all you guys who drink chocolate milk <laughs> after you right. swim, this is the guy <laughs> yeah. you need to thank. Yeah, yeah. high fives. <laughs> and the other side of that is, no, I didn't make any money from that, <laughs> just in case you're wondering. <laughs> I think you should have a little, <laughs> little, little kickback because you, I mean that's that's a really Something important spread. thing. I mean it's it's again we talk about some of the things we take for granted the pace clocks, the mm -hmm. interval training that Doc mm -hmm. Conlon created. I mean that's stuff we take for granted now. Right. And now I mean I saw a few people just chugging chocolate milk here on deck yeah. today. And I mean that's kind of one of those things that they don't know exactly where, where it, it came, came from, from but mm -hmm. they know it's just one of those things they just yeah. have to do. And right. I mean it just kudos to you guys for yes. doing that. Well, over the years, you know, I've been asked to talk to various groups of swimmers all across the country and I give these very sophisticated diagrams and training paradigms and, all, and I finally realized it's like the swimmers aren't in control of that yeah right the coaches are right. in control of that so then I started switching and it's like wait a minute you realize that the most important thing you can do as a swimmer is recover from the practice right 
right? And so right. it's like, and that starts literally as you get out of the pool. Exactly. Yeah. So the chocolate milk was something that was readily available. It started the recovery process almost instantly and, and it works. Yeah, that's great. So before we, we go, uh, what's the one thing about Doc Councilman that you can impart to the viewers that maybe people don't know? Well, you, you started off by saying how many Olympic champions and how many team titles and things. And I want to say, I don't know that Doc ever took credit for any of that. Hmm. In other words, he would always say, I never swam a yard, I didn't swim a meter. Mm -hmm. When the gun goes off, it's all about you mm -hmm. guys, right? So over his uh, door, as he walked out into the pool, there was a, a sign that said S-Y-E. Mm -hmm. And very rarely did anybody ask him what that was. Yeah, I'm like, I'm curious now. <laughs> yeah, this is fun. Submerge your ego. Oh, wow. oh yeah, yeah. Like right? So he says, it's not about me. That's great. So when he retired, everybody said, so Doc, are you, you're so proud. He goes, no, you know what I'm really proud of? Again, you said it, the innovations. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, when he started coaching, we had lane dividers with buoys in the middle. Mm -hmm. We didn't have, you know, non-turbulent lines. We had gutters that would splash back into the pool. Well, right. he, he redesigned gutters. Wow. And, I mean, you know, go down the list, like you said. Can you imagine doing a practice with a pace clock? <laughs> Counting in your head? No, no. Yeah, like while he's doing all of this, he's training yeah. for the, to swim the English Channel, right? Yeah, at 58 that's right. years old. That's right. And then for World War II, was in like like 40 missions yeah. as a bomber. Oh, it's yeah. just, what didn't he do? So yeah. iconic, so legendary, so cool to be, kind of, you know, in he, his stomping grounds. You can almost feel him here. Yes. But, but for the young coaches, the one thing he never forgot, it better be fun. Yes. Yes. Amen. Right? Mm -hmm. Never forget. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If it's not fun, why? You know, We're kids are eventually going to say, "Why am I doing exactly. this?" Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, such a pleasure. I could talk to you all day. This is yeah. so great. It's so been great. great. Thank you so much, all Dr. Right. Steger. Yeah, been a pleasure. You. So, <laughs> just, again, we already talked about. It. I mean, there's so many things that Doc Councilman did, and we, and Caitlin was just alluding to some things that I wanted to, to also say. Is I mean in the middle of all the things he was doing, he swam the English Channel. We got some photos of him oh. in 1979 when he swam and get across the English Channel at age 58, which at the time, he was the oldest person to do that. Look I mean, there are that. people in their 60s and 70s who have done it. Yes. I mean, like, you can put all that grease on there to keep yes. yourself from, from getting into hypothermia. I mean, it's just wow. absolutely amazing. Is that amazing. chocolate milk? <laughs> Is it? it might have been. You never know. But uh, just absolutely amazing. You can see the, the Dover cliffs there, and wow. there he is getting he, out he, to uh, He was very happy about the fact that they told me he needed to gain 20 to 30 pounds. <laughs> you usually don't tell your swimmers you have to do no. that. <laughs> no. Or anybody. <laughs> no, yeah. no, no. Well, it's just so been great. amazing to learn about Doc Hansman. Thank you again, Dr. Steger. And no we got a lot more for you on Deck Pass Live presented by Xfinity, so we'll be right back. Hey, Mom and Dad, there's a way to let your kids have fun. And learn a skill that could save their life. Life lessons, woo! Sadly, drowning takes too many young lives, but it's preventable, and studies show that lessons reduce that risk by 88%. So go to usaswimmingfoundation.org and enroll your child today. I learned how to swim. The USA Swimming Foundation, saving lives and building champions. Okay, welcome back to Deck Pass Live presented by Xfinity. Again, just so much history with Doc Council. <laughs> I mean, we could talk for like three shows right. and not even talk about all the things that he did. And you were saying his book is just amazing. Right? Yeah, The Science of Swimming. Of I think it's like, it, I mean, there are a lot of coaches who have written books about swimming, mm -hmm. but his book, even I think he published it in the 60s, okay. it's still relevant today. Right, of And course. it's amazing how that the things he talked about back then, people are still like, yes, I should be <laughs> applying that. I mean, there are some things He's they did so back dance. then. I mean, the way they dove in the water, the way they did flip turns, right. that has changed and that <laughs> has evolved. But some of the things, I mean, they're just, they're still, revol they were revolutionary back then. Mm -hmm. And some people are probably thinking, yeah, that's probably yeah. very interesting to do now. And maybe we should get in the water and try that. Yeah, advanced beyond his years. It is. So <laughs> here at the Top Pro Swim Series, the swim squads are still on everybody's yes, mind, especially a lot of these so athletes excited. are a part of it. And look at this. It is actually kind of bunching up a little bit here. We got uh, Camille Adams and Connor Yeager, Maya Dorado and Elizabeth Beisel. They're, That's they're, close. Yeah, they're separated by just about 60 points there, yeah. 68 points. So this is getting pretty intense. And we've got all the racing here on Swim Squads at the, in Bloomington. Bloomington. And then we got one more stop in Clovis. Clovis. So I know all four of those captains are looking for that. Um, 
top spot because they get that ten thousand dollar bonus for the charity. and that's going to be really cool because the you know all these charities that they're they're playing Definitely. for are really very important and um just i think the exposure that these charities get just mm -hmm. from being a part of the swim squads i think is special Definitely. like when you were part of it last year yeah. for the jesse reese foundation i know they really just love that you know every meet they were getting a little a shout little, out, little shout out yeah. that you know this is out there and that for people who aren't part of swim squads you can go and look at it and maybe give your own little contribution yeah and definitely there. the best is to follow the captains on twitter and like all the yeah. like trash talking but they're like really nice like last year was intense with natalie jason and lenny this year is like oh no i hope you win i hope you win <laughs> but i'm lenny and like last year is like you're going down way to pick all brush sugars jason so this year is they're a lot more friendly yeah. but it's funny though the communication and I, I just love this excitement and then we have people on twitter our fans that are doing their own leagues yeah. and they're getting involved so i think it's a great way to engage um love with our it. swimming community and as you mentioned anytime that we can contribute to a charity if you're giving them exposure or that big cash prize at the end I'm all for it it is <laughs> so tonight's racing is going to have some swim squats points being yes. going through all throughout and we're actually excited to see what's going to happen and look at this lineup tonight where as we said we talked about nathan adrian that hunter freestyle he's going to be in the final tonight we got lily king and cody miller the top seeds in the men's and women's hunter breaststroke so the home favorites are going to mm -hmm. be um in lane four, and we got the 50 backstroke, the 200 butterfly, and we're gonna close it out with Katie Ledecky in the final of the women's four and free. And then you wanna be here on Deck Pass Live presented by Xfinity, I believe it's 7.30 Eastern, we're gonna be bringing you live the men's A final of the four and freestyle. And that's gonna be really intense. Yes, I'm excited. They're, like all you said, all those races are gonna be really close. I think the men's 100 brushstroke is just stacked. We have so many powerful men's brush strokers right now. I'm really excited to see that. And then that little bit of the, the, the hometown uh, showdown between Annie Laser and of course Lily King and the yeah. women's under brush stroke. But of course, all eyes on Ethan Adrian tonight. Everybody's, I, I can't imagine that. I'm, I know everybody here knows what Nathan's mm -hmm. going through. And mm -hmm. I think win, lose or draw, they're yeah. just excited to see him on the, blocks, on the blocks racing. Because as you said, everybody just cheers for him anyway. Yeah. But when you add to the fact that he just went through all of this ordeal mm -hmm. in 2019, mm -hmm. I think that just adds the support that he's going to have for those 48 seconds. Yes. And then we'll have Cody Miller on the show tonight. Yes. So Cody Miller is going to Cody join on. us. You know, everybody, everybody loves, loves him. Cody. His vlog, his podcast. He is so busy. I'm just amazed he has a little time to come here and <laughs> swim a, a little bit in the hundred breast tonight, but he's going to swim the hundred breast and he's going to be here to talk to us on deck pass live. So you definitely don't want to miss that. All right. So that's going to do it for our show today. Again, thank you everybody for joining us and we will see you again back here. 7:30. We're going to start with the a final of the men's 400 freestyle. We'll see you then.